Hello, welcome back to my series on Python trading. In the last video, I showed how to set up a configuration file so that you could run multiple symbols with a single configuration, or you could run multiple configurations at the same time or with a single script running. And I said that I would add to that the ability to change the configuration while the script is running without having to stop and restart the script. It's a fairly simple thing, so it shouldn't take too long today, but there are a couple of nuances that I just want to introduce. As usual, I have already made a copy here. I have uh, Visual Studio Code open, and I've simply taken the code from last time, this multi-symbol, made a copy in the changing config. Uh, this is the same file from last time. I haven't made any changes yet other than to change the file name. So I've got open here the changing config.py and the config.json. So at this stage, they're the same as the files I had last time. Uh, and if you haven't seen the earlier parts in the series, I will leave a link to a playlist in the description so that you can go back and see these and catch up to where we are now. Now, before I do too much more, I'm going to do a little bit of uh, refactoring, mainly because I just can't help myself. So I've got all of these uh, print statements throughout. What I want to do is add the current date and time to those so it just looks more like a log. I don't want to change all of the print statements, so I'm going to create a new function that I'll call log that will add the date and time, and then I'll simply change the print statements to call the log function. So there's my log function. I'm getting the current date and time with date time dot date time now, and I will have to add and include. Let me just go to the top and that. So import date time, that's important here. Uh, date time dot date time now simply gets me the current time. I'm formatting that into a string y dot m dot d hms. And then I'm adding that to the beginning of the message that was passed into the log function. And then I'm just printing the message which now has the date and time at the beginning. I'll leave that on screen for a moment so that you can copy it down. And now I'm just going to change all of the print statements to simply be log. All right, I've done that. Now there was no need for you to watch. It's fairly simple. Replace print with log. And now all of those messages will print with the current date and time. Now to get to the main purpose for this video, and that is to allow the config to be reloaded if there is a change. Uh, now a fairly simple change to this would be to simply add here in the process loop So that's basically the same statement that I have already here in the init. Let me just go up here. I already have that. And I should then also add this if not config return false, because obviously if you've made a mistake in changing the config file, then it can't be processed. That seems simple enough. There's one more thing that we need to add though. Because I'm changing config here, it's actually a global variable, which means that I can happily use it inside this function. But if I make a change inside the function, it suddenly becomes local to that function. Now I think for the code that I have here so far, that doesn't matter. But if I happen to also be using this config as a global somewhere else, then it wouldn't be the same value. It wouldn't be the same variable. So I need to make sure that this is known to be a global inside this process underscore loop. And that's just done with the global space config statement. That will work, but it has a couple of shortcomings. The first is that I've got my cycle time set to, I think it is uh, 30 seconds here at the moment, which is quite long. So rereading the file every 30 seconds is not much of a load on your computer. But if you wanted to run this in some kind of high frequency trading and you maybe have a cycle time of less than a second, you're rereading the config file a lot when you don't really need to. 
Right? And it's not just the reading of the file, it's the processing of testing all the symbols against MetaTrader 5 every time. So that will create a load that you don't necessarily need if the file isn't changing constantly. The second thing is that because I've now read this in the process loop and I've got if not config return false, if I happen to edit the config file and I just make a simple mistake, a syntax error, something, then this will simply stop the script from running. What I would rather happen is that the config is now known to be wrong and it will keep trying to load the config until I get a valid config. And I can, of course, stop the script if I want to. So instead of just returning false here, I want to return true, but have an invalid config. So let's address that, uh, that second problem first. And that's as simple as I'll just log a message here. And now because I'm returning true, this will keep coming back to the process loop and attempting to reload the config file. You'll see I still don't have a test to not read the config file if nothing's changed. I'm going to put that inside load config. And now the obvious way here to not read the file repeatedly is to check to see if the modification date on time on the file has changed. So I now have a statement mod time equals OS path get m time config file path. And the reason I'm putting this all inside the load config function is because this is the one place where I actually have this config file path built up. If I wanted to uh, perform this statement anywhere else, then I would have to also have this logic somewhere else in the code. Duplicating logic in code is a bad thing. So now that this is checking for, or at least getting the mod time, I obviously want to only load the config file if that time has changed. Uh, that means I need to store the last mod time somewhere, and I'm going to actually store it inside the config. So to do that, I need to make a couple of small changes. First change, I'm passing the config object back into this function each time. And second change, I'm adding this condition statement. If config obj, which means that this is a valid config obj to begin with, and config obj dot last mod time, because now I'm going to store that last mod time inside this config object, if last mod time is equal to the current mod time, then I can just return the config object. It's a valid object and the mod time hasn't changed, which means that if the mod time hasn't changed, I don't need to do anything. Or if for some reason this is an invalid object, so on a previous iteration, I returned an error of some kind, then config object will be false, which means I'll go then through the rest of the code and reload the config object. So I'll keep trying to load it until I get a valid config object. Now, I'm checking last mod time inside this config object, so I just need to store it. And the one place to do that is down here at the end of the code. All processing is being done. The config object is finalized, ready to return. I make one last statement to store that mod time. So I'm grabbing the mod time right up at the beginning and I'm storing it again here. Now this means I also need to pass this config obj in. So in statements like this, config equals load config, I need to add config. It seems a little redundant, but that's the way that I want to uh, handle being able to have an invalid object and recreate it. And then I need to do the same in the process loop. So that's pretty much it. Uh, this config object, if it returns as an invalid object, then I'll log this message and return true, and the loop will keep coming back in here, attempting to reload that config each time because it's an invalid, and therefore it keeps trying to load. I'm going to make a couple more changes. Here, I have this cycle time equals 30. I'm going to change that to default cycle time. 
because I want to be able to actually set the cycle time inside the config file. So I'm just adding one value here at the beginning of the JSON. It's outside the groups, it's config time 10. And now instead of sleep cycle time, I want to sleep for the config time in the config. But I also want to handle a case where you haven't set that or where the config is invalid. And here's how I do it. If config, which means config is valid and has attribute in the config of cycle underscore time. So you've actually set a cycle time here. Then time sleep config cycle time. So I'll be using this value for the sleep. Else I will sleep for the default cycle time. Now what that will do, I've got a default time of 30 seconds. If I came into this config file and made some sort of change that made it invalid, so let's say I left out that comma, then the whole JSON becomes invalid and it wouldn't load. Therefore, in the loop, let me minimize a couple of things here. In this process loop, that statement would return an invalid config. It would say, if not config, log this, return true, and then go through this loop again but the loop would now say if config, which is false, therefore I'll sleep for a default cycle time of 30 seconds because obviously I can't get a cycle time out of that invalid config file. So that handles sleeping for the time that you specify inside the config. And if there's something wrong with that, then it will sleep for the default cycle time. The thing that I haven't added in so far, um, and I'm not going to bother today, it's not too difficult for you to work that out. What if I have a config time attribute here but I have something invalid like that. So you just need to add a test in the load config to make sure that this is a valid integer value or not even integer, just a valid number. Now that I think should be everything. I'm going to run this and we'll see the messages appearing. And just before I start, I've done a quick check and this actually says config time when it should say cycle time. that in there and I'm going to add one more change I'm just going to put a statement in here mainly for demonstration in the load config just here I'm just going to put a logging statement so that I'm loading the config file so that you can see when it does get reloaded and now I can run this so that's running at uh, 94706 I finished loading everything everything in the config file is valid and then 10 seconds later at 16, processed again. I'll make a change to the config file. I'm just going to change that to 20 seconds and save. So now it says that I'm reloading the config file that happened at the 10 second because that's the next time it checked. But then I should see this finished at 4737. It should be 20 seconds before the next statements appear. And there they are, 4757, so 20 seconds later. So it's loaded that. Uh, what if I put some kind of error in here? I'll make that an invalid symbol. And so I've reloaded the config file and it tells me I failed to select symbol Euro USD X. So now I only have three symbols remaining. Uh, what happens if I make them all invalid? Now I have config file is invalid, everything failed, but it's still waiting that default cycle time. So you can see this was now 948.57. And then at 949.27, 30 seconds later, it attempted to reload again. So it's using the default cycle time because this entire file was invalid. Although I do still have this cycle time here, all of the symbols were invalid. So rather than try every one second as you may have the cycle time set uh, it's giving a longer time and we just don't keep trying let me put these back and it should start to work again
and now all symbols are valid again after that 30 second delay when it next loaded the config file. So that's it for today's coding and demonstration, uh, a very simple and short tutorial. Uh, and then we can start to get onto more interesting things like more analytics and eventually to back testing. So hope you've enjoyed this. If it has been useful, remember click the like button. If you want to see more of these videos, click subscribe. And then if you click the bell icon, you'll be notified when I release new videos. So until the next time, thank you for watching.